Welcome to the Dream Mom Podcast. I am Julia Gentry. And I am Travis Gentry. And today we are live in our Facebook group, which again, if you have not been in our Facebook group, you should be. Welcome. If, if, welcome. <laughs> if you're in the Facebook group, hey, Gentries are here, getting all up in your business. If you're listening to this later, um, we encourage you to click on the show notes and join our incredible community of people who just believe in dreaming bold and living big. But today, uh, Facebook group, we're going to talk about a topic that actually many dreamers have reached out to me and said, will you please, 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 please talk about sex? <laughs> that's what they say. <laughs> please, that's all we want to hear. <laughs> that's not it at all. Just making sure you're paying attention. No, but we, they want to they know about marriage. And they want to know about how... How do you dream together? How do you keep your marriage spicy? And so today we are going to talk about bringing, keeping sexy back, getting sexy back in your marriage. And how do you really ultimately speak each other's love languages, love each other well? That's what we're going to do today. Yeah. Talk about that. Because we're experts because we've been married nine years. Five years. No. 14 years. When, when, when did we get married? What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? 8-8. Eight, eight. <laughs> 2008. 8, 8, 2000, and it doesn't matter. Details. It doesn't matter. We just want to talk to you about all the things. Um, but first and foremost, if you watch our show at all, we always ask really random questions or sometimes really deep and profound questions right out of the gate. So it's my turn. And my question to you is, what has been your most embarrassing moment? Oh, man, I don't know if I can say it. <laughs> public, but I will. It was actually... Looking back. So my the first thing that comes to my mind <laughs> is when I was probably in middle school, I went on a trip with a friend of mine and there was it was I think it was like Fourth of July or something like that. And we went camping and we're you know, there's a bunch of other kids that I didn't know, families I didn't know. I only knew the friend and then it was his girlfriend's family that we went with. So we're like camping and doing all the things and, and I was probably being, you know, that age and joking and making fun of and, you know, saying things to provoke, you know, the other kids. And so supposedly they have something every get together that they do. And they, they basically throw someone in the water naked <laughs> and you have to run out into the tent or the RV. I've never heard this before. Yeah. Oh, you haven't? No, you <laughs> well, that's because it was so embarrassing. It, it's <laughs> first time oh gosh, so you guys, up close and personal. <laughs> so, so i got picked because i was probably doing something i shouldn't have done and and so i thought they were joking and i'm like yeah whatever you're not gonna do me you don't even know me and so no they did for sure and they basically so i went into the water because i was like i don't want them to tear off my clothes and throw me in there so i just went in the water i took out my swimsuit and threw it up there and uh and waited around because I'm like, you know, maybe they'll go do something else and I can run out or whatever. And it was like, I don't know. It felt like forever. <laughs> and I was furious. I was so mad and embarrassed. And uh, and so finally they threw a little rag out there. And so <laughs> eventually I took the little rag and I had a tent and and I bolted it with the rag and running as fast as I could and jumped into the tent. And those were the days that you had like the the cameras that had like film in it. Uh -huh. And so they Which took some people are like, the what? What did you just say? <laughs> yeah, the Kodak like disposable cameras. And so they took some pictures. So my friends, like uh girlfriend's mom or whatever, they took some pictures. So I found out where they got them developed. And I think it was like a target or something like that. So I went in to that target and looked through the pictures before they got them <laughs> to remove the picture Dude. of me. Cause, and it was, and I had it for a long time, but it was like <laughs> me running out of the water to the tent with a rag and just like bolting <laughs> and jumping in it. <laughs> That's the most embarrassing thing that I've experienced. Oh, look at you. you I know. Do you want to talk about it anymore? Trauma for sure. <laughs> Trauma. I've never, I've never told you cause I know that we're going to now have to work through it. <laughs> We're going to have to take that to the limiting <laughs> That's bringing sexy back. That's bringing sexy back. <laughs> I love it. Okay, let's talk about bringing sexy back. Okay, um, here's where I want to start. I found this really, really fascinating that um, the two most common points in a marriage for people to get divorced is between years one and two and years five and eight. 
That's the most common. And I've also started to see the, the and have read that it's um, once the kids graduate. So once the kids are gone, then all of a sudden it's like the parents, right? Divorce. This is not about divorce. This is not. But if we're looking at, right, marriage and how do we keep the sexy strong? How do we keep the passion strong? It just immediately I went to just some basic statistics around like, when are those times and what could be happening in those times that's causing the, right, the ability to, or the need to separate. And so I just found those really interesting. One and two, five and eight, and once the kids graduate. And then what were the top reasons? Um, I know them, but. Money. Yep. Sex. Yep. And communication. Yep. Hmm. Which if you have communication, the sex and marriage should be resolved by the communication. Okay, but so let's talk about this. So we're not talking about divorce. Good news is we're not going to be talking about divorce. But I, I do want to talk about what does it look like in your process around keeping the, the fire in our marriage? Like as a man, right? Like what's what's important to you? What have you noticed? Like what, is that even, what does that even mean to you when we talk about, okay, keep bringing sexy back? Well, I think ultimately it does come to communication. Like everything revolves around communication. So with poor communication, you're not going to talk about sex and that's going to bring division in, you know, your relationship, whether you're not having it or doing something wrong or whatever that looks like. And then as far as financial, typically one spouse tends to lead up the finances. And if you're not communicating and talking about that, then there again, that can bring frustration because you're not on the same page of what's going on and where you're going and why you're doing certain things. And so for us, communication, one, we started out communicating and talking and, and we're really good friends before any of that. Mm -hmm. And so I think for, for us, we started off on the communication. Yeah. I mean, I think when I've considered our marriage, I would say the area that I am that most highest that the, the most high level of stimulation it's in our I communication like i am extremely intellectually connected to you which again for me it's intellect spiritual like very intellectually connected i think that our communication is super high um so i think that, that for us but i think that that's that is a not normal right i think that that's what obviously most people are getting divorced because of communication and so i think what also is is important to say is that we also had to teach each other how to communicate with each other. Yeah. And that's what I was going to say. I didn't learn communication growing up. Yeah. Like my family is not huge communicators. And so it was, a, it was something that I learned and that I wanted to like implement. Mm -hmm. And I think there, again, we, we used to spend hours just talking about dreams and things that we want to do and accomplish. And, and so I think that started to lay the foundation. Um, and, and then it was like books and workshops and all the things that we've done to, to cover and to help us to see what we couldn't see. Mm -hmm. Like ultimately it was like, we weren't, we weren't born with it. We didn't grow up in it or me, and you can talk about you. And so it was something that we learned, but then we learned it together. Well, and I think that this is, I mean, I remember a moment in time where it was one of our intense fellowships and I was ready to walk out of the room. I remember exactly where we were staying. We're actually in your grandma's basement. And you looked at me and you said, don't leave. And if you leave, don't come back. And it was like, and I, and I know it wasn't just at this, like you weren't threatening me, but that was my pattern, right? Is, is when I got mad, I was, I would just leave the room. And in a moment I looked at you and everything in me of a girl who doesn't like following rules was like, I'm out. You can't tell me what to do. But I looked at you and I was like, he means that <laughs> like, he may not let me back in the house because you meant it. And I, and I think on an unconscious level, my heart understood what you were asking, which was, we have to do this differently, right? And, you know, there's in that Bible where it says, wives submit to your husband and husbands love your wives. And I think that there was this, my ability to submit under your leadership in that moment, I didn't know that that's what was happening, right? Like, I would not have told you that that process was unfolding. But for me, it was an invitation to, we need to do this differently, and I remember we've never said that before. Like you haven't had to say that again because I just knew, okay, this has to be a different pattern. But is that what you saw growing up? 
Like, did you see like? Yeah, I mean, I think that there was an implied. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were young when your parents no, got I, divorced. I like, literally remember in the divorce, my parents saying, "It's not us; it's you. We just have things that we can't work on." And so that connected dots of like, okay, you can't work on things, then you leave, right? Like, it's kind of a you abort mission. You you just move on and, and do it differently. And so I think that it was a subliminal messaging around: if I don't like it, change it. If I don't like it, leave it. And I have a huge. I've had huge patterns around that. And sometimes that's good because I'm like, if I don't like it, nah, no big deal. Like move on to the next, move on to the next. I mean, how many times we've been like, we lived here, move on to the next one, then move on to the next. But I have a pattern if I'm not careful of just like, I'm done. And so it was totally a learned pattern, but it's been, that was like the first step into, okay, wait a minute here. Now what we know is that we teach each other how to treat each other. And so I think you and I have just been very mindful of that. And even now, like there's new things that we have to teach each other about where we're at in our marriage, because again, where we were with no kids and where we are now with five kids and what you need and what I need is very different. Yeah. Well, most, most of the time when you come into a marriage, you're modeling, yeah. you're modeling what you saw. And whether it was through, uh, you know, divorce or, you know, your parents get divorced and, and my parents are divorced and both remarried. And, and so you, you, you kind of get different like examples there and they could be totally different. And then you're like, w w which one's better or which one should I follow? Or I don't like either one of them. And then the, uh, the spouse does the same thing. And so then you come into a marriage and you typically try to communicate what you saw modeled. Yeah. Unless you're super aware of it and you're conscious and you're like, I didn't, I didn't like that. So I'm going to go to the extreme, but the extreme could be like, well, I'm just not going to say anything ever. And I'm just not going to speak my speak up when I don't like something. Yeah. And then that's a problem too, because you're two or three or five or seven, you just bury it and bury it and bury it. And then all of a sudden you're like, well, I haven't liked any of the, the stuff that we've ever done. Yeah. And you're like, well, where did that come from? Yeah. So I think that's where we started to unpeel the layers of like who we are, what we saw, and then what do we want? Yeah. Well, and I will say on that note, I think you and I have established ground rules along the way, right? Like there were never this like official meeting where we sat down and talked about this, but I just remember certain moments where we established ground rules. Like we don't say words like always and never, because it's just not the case that it's never the case. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and it's like, you know, cause I think when you get to those heated moments, you always do this, you never do that. And and so those were just words that you and I said, like, okay, you don't get to use those words because they aren't actually truthful. And they're a little bit emotionally manipulative because you're trying to get someone when they're down and prove a point. But what's helpful is that you do have some proof to say, Hey, here's what I'm seeing. Like words, like patterns, I'm seeing patterns. This is what I'm seeing. Can you help me understand? Yeah. Or I'll say, you mostly never do this. <laughs> <laughs> Some, something you, like that. You mostly kind of <laughs> almost always do this to me every time. <laughs> so just add a word in but there and then it's totally that, like, fine. When we start to do that, it just like dismantles the anger or the like preconceived notions. And it's been a helpful practice of, hey, here's some patterns that I'm seeing. Can you help me understand? Yeah. And the biggest thing that's helped, I think, for both of us is this is how it makes me feel. Mm -hmm. Like we both have an interpretation on what the situation. And so it's like, hey, this is how it makes me feel. And you're like, well, that doesn't make me feel that way at all. Yeah. But then you can say, oh, that's interesting how you're energetically charged from this. And I, I don't have, I'm not like, I'm not seeing it. Okay. I was not seeing it that okay, way. So can we talk about that for a minute? Because those moments are my most favorite, but now I'm an eight on the Enneagram, which means I'm a challenger. So I build intimacy through challenging moments. So for anyone who's listening, that's like, Oh my gosh, I hate conflict. I love it. Cause at the end of it, I'm like, Oh, we are so much closer. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm so glad that you cried. I cried. You're messy. I'm messy. Like I actually really appreciate it. And I've, lo I've lost friendships because of that. We get on the other side of a difficult situation and they're like, peace. I'm like, we were just getting good. Like this was, a, it was just a conversation. They're like, you're yelling. I'm like, I'm not yelling. I'm just using capital letters. Like that's how I talk. Right. But I, what's interesting about when you think about connection and intimacy, the fire that we're wanting in our marriage is in the work that we're avoiding. Meaning if you and I are having a heated conversation because of the way I do something, and you go, yeah, but the way that it makes me feel is insecure or like you don't see me. Boom. I could take that as rejection. I could take that as I've done something wrong. And maybe I have. But I, if I actually step back and I went, oh, my gosh, I didn't know that about you. Where did that come from? And let's say it's, oh, no, it's actually a pattern for me. Or you all of a sudden start to unpack. 
Well, actually it goes back to either my last relationship or that's what I saw my parents, or it's just happening so often now that it's, but what that does is it gives me insight into your upbringing, into your interpretations, into your heart, into areas that you are processing or need to heal. And so it's like the connection and intimacy that we're wanting in our marriage is like those moments that we see as bad or wrong or conflict or no, well, if we do them wrong, yeah, we could really hurt each other. But what if it's an invitation to say, Hey, here's my heart. Here's my soul. Here's my interpretations. Here's my pain. Here's my past. Like this mm -hmm. is all coming out real time. And the idea here is, is that at the other side of that, I know you more like that's what's helped me these last couple of years is when I, I don't always catch myself, but in a moment when you're expressing yourself, when I do, I go, I will know him better on the other side of this. That's my goal. Yeah. Now, if I'm trying to protect myself and I'm focused on my ego and I'm focused on being right or my limiting belief, like I don't want to be wrong because then you're going to reject me. Like when I'm in that zone, oh yeah, I'm defensive. And you know this because you've said to me, Julia, you're defensive. I am. I'm protecting my ego. <laughs> like I don't want you to reject me. So I am defending myself in this moment because ultimately I'm afraid of your rejection as opposed to when I'm going, I could connect with Travis. I could know him better on the other side of this conversation. I could know his hurts, his fears, his dreams, his desires, what he likes, what he doesn't like. Then it allows me to come into it way more open hearted. Yeah. I think that's the goal is like, can I know this person better on the other side of this conversation? Yeah, but it doesn't have to be. And, and that's been the process that because like yelling at each other to me, it doesn't bring me closer. It builds resentment. It plants a seed. And I'm not of, saying yelling. I'm I know. Yelling. I'm just saying that that is what I if you go down that path, if that's like my storyline, if that's what like yelling and, and all that, and maybe saying something that you are going to regret, but you're, you're trying to like get a, you know, a reaction or, and then it just plants something where you're like, maybe I can't trust you. Or maybe, you know, like, um, this is, this is who you are underneath, you know, this other facade, you know? So I think it's so important to communicate of understanding of the feelings behind something. Correct. And then there again, with with what's in the book and everything that you talk about, it it stems from there again what I've seen and ex experience and my interpretation of situations that I've been in. Yeah. And so I think in the beginning of our marriage, I would not like that, but I would get I would rise to that level, and then I would want to like say something so much that I wanted a certain reaction out of you because if I didn't, then you weren't listening. I, you weren't listening. Yeah. I was shutting down. Yeah. Yeah. So if I didn't, if I couldn't push enough to make you break, yep. then I wasn't being heard. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's, that's why it's so important in intense fellowship, also known as arguing in, in a marriage, it's good to have and not to be, you know, like every day is not going to be, like rainbows and butterflies. Yeah. And I think that there needs to be some, that's where growth happens, but it can be in a healthy way. I agree. And I, agree. I think there again, coming back to saying certain things to me, that's one of the things like there are certain words and certain situations you can't take back. I agree. And if you say certain in those moments, that word is in the back of the other person's mind forever. Well, and I think for me, one of the, the things that, um, you know, cause I'm, I really believe that every seed that we plant, right. Be careful what you plant. Cause you do you want that harvest. And so I even know for me that I have to, like, when we've said things like, you know, we're not even on the same page. That to me is, is a recipe for disaster because it plants an incredible seed where it says what God brought together, let no man tear apart. And so it's even being able to change that around like, no, no, we're not going to, we're, we are, on, we have the same book. We're on the same page. We're just looking at this from different angles and we cannot let the enemy come in and try to create division between us. We're looking at the same word. We're just looking at it from a different, different angle. Help me understand your angle. Yeah. Right. And I think that that, so it's like along the way, as you venture in depths of communication, I think is when you have to go, all right, we got to reassess this. Right. Or when you made this comment, this is how it made me feel. Or can we come at this differently? You know, like I was even talking to Malachi today and he said, I'm just still struggling with Aslan. And, and I feel like we keep having these same conversations over and over and over again. And I said to him, okay, buddy. Okay. So what's happened though, is now you've created patterns in your relationship. So you do this, she does this, you do that. She does this. And he was like, yeah, that's what happens every time I go. Okay. Then you need a pattern interrupt. He was like, what is that? I was like, it's like, well, all of a sudden you're like in the room, you have a code word 
And it's the idea here is that it's like, wait, what did you just say? It's like, we have to break the pattern of communication. We have to break the pattern that isn't working, whether it's a code word or whether it's something that triggers me to go, oh, wait a minute, what? And it gets your brain to not go on the automatic spiral that we always do. Right. And he was like, well, what would our code word be? I'm like, well, we have to establish that. Right. Because it's a code word that allows us to go, okay, wait, 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 let's do this differently. Right. It's kind of like you going like, Hey, we're not walking out. I'm like, wait, we're not. And it was like, it like stunned me. I'm like, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to finish this conversation. I'm like, we are, <laughs> you know, like it was just enough to kind of get your brain to like kick into a different cylinder. And I think that's important. I think that's important, especially at these moments, right. Whether it's your one and two or five and eight or whenever it is, I think that it's important to go, Hey, how do we, how do we bring the sexy back? Yeah. And there's, there's also a point though, going back to what you said, there are situations where it's like, I don't, we need to, we need to step away, but it's the way you step away. Mm -hmm. So I think it's not that you need to finish the conversation every time, right then and there it's saying like, Hey, I, I need time not slamming the door and saying I'm leaving or, you know, going off mad. It's saying, look, I'm, I need to like, clear my mind. I need to go out. I just, we need to revisit this conversation, but I don't feel like it's healthy right now. Yeah. I need to go do something. Sure. And we've done that before where it's like, look, I, I just like, I, I need to like go outside. I need to like get some fresh air. I need to think about potentially what I want to say and how I want to say it as opposed to like reacting out of anger okay, and so frustration. My question to you now is so, so let's say I ask you the question of what brings sexy back in our marriage? Right. Cause there's love language. Like you could take another way. I could have said that is like, what's your love language. And there are, I'm not an expert in the love languages. I've read the book. I know of the love languages, but my approach in this is, and my question to you or to us today is then what brings, what brings sexy back in our relationship? I think what it, it's communicating in a way of helping each other to understand where we're at, because what we're doing with homeschooling and, you know, raising five kids and we're both kind of doing our own, you know, businesses. And then we have some things that we're doing together and is coming together and, and me saying like, I'm frustrated yeah. and you could take it as like, why are you frustrated at me? And it's like, no, I'm just, I'm frustrated. But typically the pattern for me is, and I think a lot of people where it's like, you're mad at work or something happens or you're driving home and you get mad and frustrated and you take it out on the people you love the most. Yeah. And so what I would say is currently is saying like, I'm, I'm mad. I'm, I'm super frustrated right now. And, and here's why. Mm -hmm. And either a, I'm just here. To, I just need to vent. I'm not, I'm not looking for your feedback yeah. or two. I need a new thought. I need you to help me re rethink this or give me a new question to ask myself about this situation. And so then I can like internalize it differently on how I am because it's not obviously working. And if it's directly related to you, then it's saying like, Hey, here's, here's something that's happening. And I, I, I don't like, and here's why. But I think for me, what I've really liked is being able to say like, I'm having a bad day. And then it's like, I'm going to throw up with you with some words. Well, and what you're saying though, I think is that idea. And I want to say it's just been, even in this last year that it's, it's been a huge part of our conversation, which is include me in your process, or I want to include you in my process. And you said that to me, I don't even remember when it was this last year, but it has shifted me dramatically because I realized, and I think this is what happened. This is what happens when you hear of people who's right. Their kids graduate. And then they say, well, we just grew apart. Right. Well, truth be told, you're right. You're either growing apart or you're growing together. There's no in between. There's not a mute point. Right. And so when, but in these last couple of years, as our, as you've shifted your attention, my business is growing, we're moving, we have five kids. Like we have a ton of moving pieces. There's been in the back of my mind. Oh, I get that. Like I actually can now see how people wake up in 20 years and they're like, we just grew apart. That question though, almost ensures that doesn't happen. Yeah. Right. Because if it's like, Hey, let me, I just want to include you into my process right now at any level. Like that could be, I'm, I'm having a hard day. Let me include you in the process. It could be, I have no idea what I'm doing. It could be an, I miss you. Like it doesn't actually even matter what it is. It's just, I want to include you in my process exactly where I'm at. It, that to me is where intimacy is built and ensures that like, we don't wake up in 20 years apart because yeah. I'm a part of your process, even though I see you less than normal right? Or you and I 
have less one-on-one -on -one conversations than we would have four years ago, or right, like our date, actually our dates have been better than, than normal. But the idea here is, is that when I'm included in your process along the way, I never feel like I'm growing apart from you. I yeah. feel like I'm, I'm with you in your process. Yeah. Let me, let me finish that thought and then I'll ask you. So nine times out of 10, and this is specifically for the guys is what I see for myself is when I'm living inauthentic to me. And if you've ever read wild at heart, like men, we're, we're supposed to, there's certain things that are just in us. And for me, it is adventure and doing all these things. And it, it maybe it's not for you, but if we're not living authentic to ourselves, and that can look so many different ways, that's what frustrates me the most. And I can say it's work. I can say it's Julia. I can say it's the kids, but I'm not saying what it really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and, and so I've identified that when I'm not taking these micro like adventures and going out and, you know, like mountain biking or hiking or whatever it is to go like explore and fill my soul. And that's where I, I feel like I, I hear and I get downloads and like, that's my, my place. But when I don't allow myself to go do those things, then I do get resentful because then I can, I can blame you. I could blame the kids, but it has nothing to do with them. It's that I'm not communicating and saying, I need time. I need time to go do this so I can get filled up so I can come back and have overflowing for you and the fam well, okay, family. Well, so let's speak to that because being your wife, and this is something that came up at Dare to Dream Conference and was really a prophetic message that I gave to all the men, which is I think that our men have lost joy. And I think what that's creating is it's 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 creating a stop loss for our the next generation to understand how to process emotions, how to live into their emotions, how to have heavenly emotions, how to pro right all the things. And so I think that there is this huge opportunity right now as the, the man of the house to recognize that when you're in that authentic ownership of who God's really created you to be, and you are clear with the desires of your heart, you're clear with your standards, you know, you, you know how you're wired, you've taken the time. I mean, I just really think that people don't take the time to figure that stuff out. It's not rocket science, but it does take some time. That's what creates a block in our joy, right? Which then creates this like get this like stop is stop gap. Is that stop loss? What's the word I'm looking stop for? Loss. So I don't, is that a word? The thing. Well, is there it, is. is, it, is stop it, loss is, is actually a loss? trading term. Is that it like where you stop something so you can't, it can't go. Yeah, okay. Stop loss. So we're creating the stop loss for this next generation that actually doesn't know how to like walk and joy. And so I think that for me as your wife watching you is, I think there's an insane shift in how you show up when you are being authentic. And so it's always that funny thing when, when I hear you or someone say, well, I just feel selfish doing some of these things, it's like, oh my gosh, it actually is robbing the room and robbing our family of your overflowing of joy when you don't get that need met yeah. in a healthy way. Yeah. Right. Because then what happens is I think that's when we turn to unhealthy things, right? Like that's when I think men and women get the wandering eye and, oh, if I married that person, I would be happier. Or if I made more money, then I would be happier. And so then it's like, we start to go to the resources asking the resources to be something they were never supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And then we wonder why we're disconnected in our marriages. Yeah. Well, because now I'm asking everything around me to give me something that I should have been getting from God and should have been taking ownership of. And then including my wife in the process. Huh? Yeah. Pretty we're going, going for the quick hits Yeah, we're going of for the quick like that hits. fulfillment as yeah. opposed to. And then oftentimes you hear the wife's like, I didn't even know you had that need. Like th there was no, I had no idea that that was in you. I had no idea that that was what. Well, you like you said, probably for the most part, most people, most men don't sit and say like, what do I need? No, like, gosh, can we it, please, am can I... we please pause and then, can, <laughs> right now? Bro, where's all my bros at? It, am I in my teens? Am I in my twenties? Am I in thirty? It looks different. Like the, the evolution of what I desire and what makes my soul come alive looks so different over the last 20 years. So it's, but it's also sitting in that quiet space of like, what, what am I missing? You know, like one, it's okay. Am I not getting enough quiet time period? Like with God and praying and believing and living by faith and not by sight and all the, the scriptures. That's why they're, they, they're so powerful. The best book ever written. And, and, and then, you know, like quotes and what, what makes you like rethink because, and we've talked about it so many times, but, um, Tony Robbins says it, the quality of your answer the answer of your questions determines the quality of your answers. Yeah. And so are you, are you running into the same thing because you're asking yourself the same question or doing the same thing, expecting a different result? Mm -hmm. Are you addicted to shopping or, 
you know, whether it's a nicotine or alcohol or what at work and, and you're like, it's really not feeding you. It's taking from you. Yeah. Well, and I think that here's the issue. Cause I think a lot of times what could happen from a man right now is, well, I don't have any needs. And I like, that is, that is so early 1900s is that you're a human. You have needs. All of us have needs. That is not a male, female thing. That is a human thing. And the problem without even women, right? When you talk to some women, they're like, I ain't, I ain't no need nothing. And you're like, okay, baby. Okay. Woman power. Like we all do. And the problem is that when we recognize that we, when we don't, when we overlook our need, then we miss that we're actually going to artificial fulfillment to get the need met. And it works until it doesn't, right? But that's what will cripple a marriage or our finances or our spiritual walk is that we actually aren't acknowledging our needs. We aren't getting them fulfilled in a, he a healthy way with God. And then to your point, we're not including our spouse in the process of like, man, like I need connection and it looks different, or I'm really struggling with this, or intimacy is, is not what it needs to be, or I feel really insecure in this part of our marriage. That's scary, but it's like, what's the alternative? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I just feel like that's a key thing of, of inviting each other into the process. So that way it's like you create... um. I think it's the discipline in doing that, but then it's, it creates the intimacy, which connects the, you know, male and female to heart to heart. Um, I just think that's huge. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so if you haven't read the wild at heart, I think it's, it's such a good book. It gives you a different perspective of like, and there again, everybody's outlet, everybody's, you know, fulfillment looks different. That just resonated with me. Um, because I think we were, you know, born in nature and we, you know, God created nature. And, and I think that's, he's in everything. Yeah. And, and, but I think what's interesting about this too, and I think I have to go level deeper. This is not a conversation like, well, what makes you happy? You know, that happy is cheap. What we're after is like true fulfillment. So part of what's been interesting in watching you as your wife, knowing how, how important adventure is, it started years and years and years ago, a little bit more of like, well, this will make me happy. I think that's what ultimately led both of us to getting sober and to like, realize that this is not about stuff. This is not about doing one more thing. There's something that's happening. And so when you said, but adventure for me is ultimately like where God speaks to me. It's where my soul feel alive. It's it's where I get good ideas. It's where I feel most connected. That's that, that's a totally different zone. So what we're not suggesting in your marriage is to tell me like, well, just tell me all the things that makes you happy. Cause sometimes happy is, that is not the answer. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you do not, that is not going to be good for you long-term. I think it's a more of a man, like this, this brings my soul alive. And it's cause you, it's where you are connected to God. It's where yeah. you're in your flow state. It's where that's different. Yeah. So it's like taking that like a level deeper and not just hiding underneath the like, well, I just want to be happy. Well, said Jesus never. I yeah. Guess. That's not it. Yep. Yep. What about you? What brings sexy back for me? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, so recently I can tell you, I probably might've have a different answer to this question in any season in our marriage. But I think the most sexy thing that I've seen you do in, and not that you're not, I think you're actually a really sexy human, by the way. <laughs> I really think you're sexy. And one of the sexiest things that I've seen you do on top of that was um, your most recent cleanse. Um, I watched you choose a very inconvenient time to um, humbly position your heart before God as the leader of our family. And you did a cleanse that wasn't just about though you understood how good it would be for your body, which I think is super sexy as a wife is to watch your husband just make choices for their body. That's good for their body to take the time to do that. But then you understood that your priorities had gotten a little out of whack. And so it was a time that you were reposturing yourself to put God first. And watching you in that process, because you'd been talking about for months and months and months of wanting to be patient, wanting to be peaceful and wanting to be in flow state. And I'd heard you say that a lot. I actually watched it on your physical body. Like I watched your countenance change. I watched, I watched what I appeared to look like heaven and earth because of just your willingness to just put the priority and the main thing, the main thing. Mm -hmm. And to me, there is nothing sexier than a man who is obedient to God surrender to what God wants to do, still vocal about what he wants in his hearts and dreams, but realizing that what he wants is what God wants and what God wants is what he wants. And like that to me was like, dang, that was, <laughs> I mean, I was like, 
Every should sell to, that. To start <laughs> fasting on a weekly basis. <laughs> so, so I did. I did it just to give context because so people are like, "What? Is, what is bath?" It? And your wife will uh, think you're sexy, bro. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I think I think ultimately Unless what you're your baby and complaining all the time is not that great. Yeah, what what you're saying, and so we went on a trip down to Florida, and I heard it the week before, and it just God spoke to me and resonated with me to do a 72 hour water fast. Period. Water, nothing else. And so um, I was like, you know, just like, and it's funny because we've talked about New Year's resolutions and all the things, and it's like, you know, my first thought was to to start when we get back, mm -hmm. and then it was like something inside of me was like. God's like, no, like, no, now, like, and so the day we got to Florida is when I started and on the me, way to Florida. I'm like, being a supportive guy. <laughs> and I said, does anybody want to start a three day water fast with me? It was and me I, and the three kids, the older kids. I legitimately looked at them and I was like, that's the worst time in the world. The <laughs> We're going to have ice cream. We're going to do all these things. And I was, and like, then I was like, thank you. I literally, yeah, I support. literally. <laughs> I got shot down hardcore when I was like, does anybody else want to do it with me? I was like, nobody wants to do that with you. And by the way, here's all the things you're going to miss if you do that. And I said, sign me up. I'm going to do it. <laughs> Sorry. So I did it. Oh, it doesn't. And there again, when you're convicted by something, it does, I don't need anybody else rooting me on or cheering me on. It was it was something. Yes, it was. Um, it's amazing for your body. Um, but it's also it was kind of a, a spiritual cleanse, too, of saying, like, there's nothing in this world that I, I need ultimately. And to sacrifice that for three days. And, and I, there again, just the clarity of mind that it, it brings. Well, to me, I think there's nothing sexier than that. I think as a wife, and again, when I've really been sitting with wives, submit to your husband and husbands love your wife. I think that that submission piece is Travis, when you are so aligned with, with the spirit and keeping the main thing, the main thing there, there is just something that it, one, it makes you easy to submit to. It makes you easy to follow. Like it just especially with my, not with you, but in general, my control issues or trust issues that try to like rear up consciously or unconsciously, it just positioned my heart in a different way of like, man, I want to hear what he's has to say. I want to follow him. I need to make sure that I am giving Travis the space to lead boldly and to, 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 to live big. And so for me, that is, the, I think the sexiest thing that you could do. So You're welcome. So what's the one takeaway for them or for me? For 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 them. What's the <laughs> one thing that you'd say that has we've been married, you know, over 15 years, have five kids and we're still in the process of learning, but what what's the one thing that you would say has helped and we continually get better on that someone could implement or you utilize? So I'm be, I'm learning that I am such a visionary. And I work off of in theory. <laughs> so if I say this to my team all the time or to the kids in homeschool, I'm like, in theory, this is what you do. Truly, the, the number one thing that I would say is this statement of, I want to invite you into my process. That's it. Because what that does for me is it says, what's my process? What am I doing? What am I not sharing? What am I not connecting on? What am I not updating my husband on? Like, what the, I just think as women, we just slowly start to like, bow out on inviting your husband to the process. So my number one is that just try it at least a couple of times a week of, Hey, I'd like to invite you into my process. Huge. It's been such a game changer for me. Yeah. That simple statement. Okay. Good. I would say, and this is more to the guys, I would say, communicate, use your words and man up and communicate with your wife. And what would that like now, now this is more of me, right? That what would that, how do you start? Say, I heard a podcast. <laughs> you should listen to this and we should talk about it. Okay, great. Just listen to the podcast <laughs> and we need to listen to it together because obviously our words are not uh, mingling well. And so I would say there again, it's just start, start somewhere, wherever you're at of like, Hey, like if you're feeling resentment, if you're feeling frustrated, if you're not talking about sex, if you're not talking about money, if you're not talking about like, here's who I was, but that's not who I am anymore. Like break it down, like invite the other person in the conversation. And yes, you can do that as, as a, a, a woman to your husband too. But I think for men, it's like, we need to be able to communicate and, and invite your spouse into where you're at in your process and just start somewhere. And then I think build upon that of like, Hey, that 
actually worked well. Like I don't have this resentment or I'm not frustrated or when you are frustrated, be like, man, I'm, I'm frustrated. And, and here's, here's what's going on in my head. Invite the other person into the conversation that you're typically having in your head that the other person doesn't know about, but then you explode on them and you're like, they should know what's going on in me. Mm -hmm. And so it's just starting and saying, yes, listen to this podcast, invite your spouse to listen to this Two, you know, read wild at heart three, like just invite the other person in of like, Hey, I feel like we should start communicating a little bit more. I don't know what that looks like, but let's start this journey together. Totally. And I would say upon that, like, Again, it's, it's, you know, growth is less of a skill set and more of a mindset, meaning you could Google, how do we have more effective marriage and, or communication in our marriage? And you would find pages and pages and pages of answers. So it's really more, less about what books or devotionals or things could we do and more around just the right mindset and heart set and the ability to do that journey together, right? Yeah. So oftentimes if you're like, well, we're not good communicators yet. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. well, we, we fight all the time. Well, that doesn't mean you have to always fight, right? Like it's, it's the ability to kind of say like, Hey, let's start and let's start this together. Right. I think that that's huge. And then I think part of this is just knowing how you press, you're an internal processor. So sometimes when, if you're not letting me into the process, you give me three, three words, right. For a 30 day processing session that I got three words. And for me, I am a verbal processor. So I've had to learn how to say to you, hey, what's about ready to come out of my mouth isn't all true. So let me get it out of my mouth because that's where my thinking happens. And then let me be able to go, okay, that's that's the piece. Yeah. And that was messy before because I would say these things and the next day I'd be like, yeah, but you said, and I'm like, I didn't say that. Did I say that? And you're like, yep, because you remember everything that I say. Like, <laughs> I don't. And so it was like, oh, I didn't mean that. He's like, well, what are you saying? I'm like, I don't know. Now I forgot. And I like was feeling all of this pressure until I was like, oh, I'm a verbal processor, which means just like you have a million thoughts. I oftentimes have a lot of words and I need to I need to inform you of which ones I want you to pay attention to. And I need to be careful with the rest of the words. Yeah. And and I say that book just because it, it obviously it, it helps you maybe put some perspective around maybe the way you're feeling as a guy. Um, girls can read it too. But the other thing I would say is read read Julia's book and do it together because then it allows you, there's a workbook that you can get too if you haven't read it. And it, it allows you, this is all of the information. Julia wrote the book and this is our life that we've spent the last 10 to 15 years and through all of the, the trials and tribulations and workshops and books that we've read, it, it comes down to this is like kind of the foundation of like, go through that with your spouse and it starts to open up the conversation. And, uh, you know, like there again, some of the things that you didn't even know, you're peeling back the, the layers oh, of the yes. onion and understanding like, oh, wow, like I do this because of this. It has nothing to do with you or my situation. It's actually just it's been in me and that's just been a, a false story I've been telling myself. So that, that would be the other thing is re read this book as a couple. And we'll say if you go to our website now, which is the juliagentry.com and you buy the book, the workbook, the whole dream suite, and you use the discount code dream 10, you're going to get 10% off one book, two books, 20 books. So don't forget to use that discount code as well to our Facebook group. We love you. I love your chats. I'm seeing your chats now. I promise. I said this last time that I would get better. <laughs> you figure out. Do better. <laughs> we see you <laughs> now. I see you now. But we're glad that you joined us live. Or if you're listening to this later, we hope that this encouraged you and your honey bunny as you continue to bring sexy back. Know that we're all a work in progress. And until next time, dream on. Hey there, ladies. And yes, I did say ladies. I have a question for you. Do you feel overwhelmed with uncertainty or a lack of clarity as you head into your day? Or maybe you struggle with the anxiety of wanting more, but not knowing how to make the necessary changes in the midst of being a mom, raising baby, grocery shopping, all the things, but you're ready. You're ready to wake up feeling focused and aligned with the dreams that God has given you so you can wholeheartedly pursue what matters most in your faith, family, and career. If that's you, then I want to gift you with a free mini course where I literally give you my morning routine for success. That's right. Being a mom of five under the age of nine, I know firsthand how important our mornings are. And with my proven faith-based daily routine, you too can align your actions and your dreams in just 15 minutes a day. This morning routine is not just about getting up early. It's about cultivating the right mindset, heart set, and dream set that will encourage you and equip you in a rising and aligning 
every morning. Click on the link below and you can receive this free gift today. Don't spend the rest of your life just dreaming about the life you want. Arise to the challenge and create the life you want one morning at a time.